What's up everybody, Greg Treziak here at Pragmatic Works, bringing you an amazing preview feature from the Power BI service. This one is called Explore This Data, and it has some pretty big implications about how you interact and get to really explore your reports. So today I wanna to dive into how you could use this, what are some limitations, what are some things that I like about it, that way you have a much nicer time looking through your data and not having to constantly make changes to your main report and allow users to actually explore and ask questions that they wanna see. So what I wanna do is dive right into this. On the service here, I just have a basic report, manufacturer's analysis, Van Arsdale data, just a good example of data you might find. And what I wanna point out to everybody is the explore this data feature. This has got the binocular symbol, so we're gonna to go to this area right here. This is one of three major locations that we're gonna find explore this data. First one's in the service right here on a report, we're gonna see that there. The second is in a workspace, we'll see that as well. And the third could be if you're running something kinda of just ad hoc in a data mart, you can also find the feature there. Let's dive in to explore this data. Before we get started, want to learn more about Power BI for Finance or Universal Design? Visit prag.work slash greg40 and you'll save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription. And you're gonna get access to over 100 courses. Now, onto the video. I'm gonna click on it right now. You're gonna notice a pop-up shows. It lets me know any existing filters. It lets me know that it is also in preview. All right, so definitely some cool changes. I wonder what they're gonna do next with it. We'll see. Now, a couple things here. You can move this around a little bit by hitting the splitting the view, but you can't really eh, move it to the side. So how do we actually go ahead and build something? We have two options here. Option one, matrix. If I wanna see a more tabular view of my data, I can pop right in, I can view it. If that's what I want, I've got it. The other option for me is down here with visual. So not only do I have a matrix table kind of based option, I also have a more visual based option. And literally, we've got the data over here on the right hand side there. Now, one of the limitations of this is once we end up sharing an exploration that we've made, or we save this as a report, we need to make sure that users that we share our exploration to also have access to our semantic model. They're gonna need build permissions because they're gonna need to go in and actually explore the data. They need to be able to see the data to do that. So that is an extra step, a little bit of a kind of pro-con, but it makes sense why you've got to do that. So just make sure if you are sharing and saving, go ahead and do that as well. All right, so how do we go from here? Let's actually build something. I'm just gonna go to date, grab the year, throw it in. All right, there we go. Now at the bottom, we're gonna see a rearrange data kind of pop up. It shows me my rows, columns, values. Does this look familiar? It looks very familiar to me, all right? It's a typical Power BI experience, but it's here, it's separated. It's almost kind of a little, bubble window, we can explore, do whatever. So I've got years here, let's go ahead and grab something from sales. Let's say I wanna go with uh, sales by year, I'll throw that in. All right, maybe instead of year, we got the matrix, let's go throw in month. I'll throw it into the rows here as well. And there we go, a fully functioning matrix. I see if I wanna add any filters, I could say, hey, only show me a certain year, it's gotta be less than, let's say 2020. Apply it in, all right, pretty good. So you have a lot of flexibility here just like you would in your Power BI report in the desktop. Drill option here, if I wanna go in, drill down, go to the next level, expand. So the same functionality of a matrix is there here. So I really like that and again, you can see your filters as they pop up. I'm gonna put clear all content and then I start fresh. Racer button, I'm back at it, I'm brand new. Now that is the matrix component, great functionality. But what about bottom down here, this visual side down here? So let's move out of this and let's actually explore a bit of the visual component. So let's say I brought in year and I'm gonna bring it this time right on in. 
And we'll change this up in a moment. Mm -hmm. All right, let's bring sales again. But this time, I'm going to hit the visual drop down. And now it's making me a visualization. So if I want to keep it a line chart, which it defaulted to, I could. Or better yet, let's say I go in and make a cluster bar chart. OK, right? So I can explore here. Another option here is the lightning bolt. The lightning bolt will automatically choose the visual for you. So if you're not in the mood to really explore, you just want the best one right then, right there, throw it in. You can go ahead to explore this data. Boom. And then there we go. It's saying, hey, it's a line chart. That's where you're at. But take a look at all of the different ones we have available, right? So there is quite a few there that we can select that we can choose from. So whatever you want to go with, whether it's a uh, pie chart, <laughs> whatever you want, you can grab in there. Now you have some other features down here, details, etc., and that is going to match and associate self itself with the visual that you choose. If I switch over to my vertical view here, I have them side by side. Personally, I prefer that because then I've got my table, I've got my visuals, it's right there, and I can explore something, get a little bit deeper, right? A lot of Power BI. We have a question, we want an answer, we're digging into the data, we don't always wanna play with our report, we don't always wanna go into the desktop, we're right in the service, something's been shared with us, we get asked some questions, and that's why I really, really do actually enjoy this feature because I can just look quickly without changing anything. And if I'm happy with it, I can close out of it. Or what I can do is go ahead and save it. And there's two ways we can save. Option one, we can just save this expiration. That's where it gets a little bit tricky. Saving an expiration, we can only save that to a premium per capacity workspace or something that is fabric enabled. That is going to be a caveat. Not everybody has that, so just keep that in mind. Other option we've got here is save as a report. If you do save as report, that we could place anywhere. So that is a little bit of a workaround. You could place that wherever you need to. Just keep that in mind. That is a separate report. Someone could have access to the report, but not so much the expiration. So that is a limitation. We also can go ahead and open a new tab. That's going to require you to save that expiration and then take a peek at something that is fabric enabled or premium per capacity. I've got my old Greg challenge here that Austin made that for me. What a, what a, what a silly guy. Uh, and I could use that if I needed to. So limitations there. Other thing, share. If I want to share this, I need to save as well. But once I've done that, I can go ahead, save and I'm set. So some limitations, some advantages, just something things to keep in mind. But the fact that I can explore the data and not affect the main report, I really, really do enjoy. So what about other spots, right? I mentioned a data mart, but I also mentioned in the workspace. So I'm going to close out of this on the report view. I'm not going to save it for now, and I'll let it be. I'm actually going to head over to my workspace over here. I call it Explore This Data. I'm going to pop into there, and you'll see my two options, my semantic model, my report. I've kept it pretty basic here. It's just hanging out, ready to go. So if I want to explore this data, that preview feature here, I'm going to go to my three ellipses. So right here on the semantic model, I see my three ellipses. I'll hit that, and there we go. I've got explore this data right at the top. So it's in your face in a couple spots because it's a lesser known feature that is really, really good. To me, it's a safari for your data. I love it. So I'm just gonna click on this and boom, right there, based off of the semantic model, I'm in, I can go in and explore it right here. Super, super nice and easily. Same thing with my report. I could do the same and explore this data. So really like this feature. If you wanna explore your data, not mess up your major report, I really think it's an awesome, great way to get started. The sharing side of things, the saving side of things, you're gonna have to weigh the pros and cons of that. But if you're not using the Explore This Data feature, it's definitely time to start. All right, everybody, this has been Greg Treziak with Pragmatic Works. I'll see everybody in the next video. Make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. Bye, y'all.